podcast You ready to go? Ready when you are, Agent Pembry. All right. <laughs> Agent Pembry. Wasn't it Sergeant Pembry? Yeah, it was Sergeant Pembry. You got me. Oh. You got me. Freudian slip. I was at Office Depot making copies yesterday, and the chick's name badge said trainee. I freaked her the hell out. It said, Office Depot sent a trainee to me. <laughs> she nice. Looked at, she looked at me like I was going to eat her fucking tongue. <laughs> I had to go do a little bit of drugs. I said, we got everything here from a little Joe to damn if I know. <laughs> Oh, that that's that sounds like the voice you called in on my one show and asked me if I had fried chicken. No, see, that's Drexel. Since you've been in the room, there's a woman with her breasts is hanging out on the TV. You haven't even bothered to look. You're just clocking me. I love that. <laughs> that's too funny. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Sherry. Clarence Worley? <laughs> Almost sounds like a nigga name. Hey, get a spoon, man. Get Get, get, Alabama's, we go. get Alabama's bag. Tell that bitch she's coming home to me. <laughs> One of the greatest Whoa. movies of all time. Man, oh, man. What was that line from that one movie? You better, better go home and tell your mama to get ready for me or something. Make sure that bitch got a bean pie straight. Mm, well, <laughs> you have to remind me on that one. Uh. <laughs> She better have my bean pie ready. I forget what it was. The alternative media source of a bad manipulation. It's too funny. Anyway. Tell you what, have you seen the accountant yet? <laughs> yeah. No. All right, guys, we're getting ready to come up. Second hour of the Ocelli Effect begins here on American Freedom Radio at AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Do happily welcome you to the show in case you missed the first hour. I spent a little bit of time yelling and screaming like an idiot. And uh, Sherry Wisdom put up with me. I think she's still here. <laughs> Sherry, <laughs> you still with me? You're never an idiot. I always love our discussions. Even We don't have to agree. I don't, I mean, to me, sometimes the fact that we don't agree is better for both of us because... I get to look at some things differently. I think sometimes I, I do bring some things to the table that help you look at things differently. Um, I think it's important that just the fact that we are able to have discussions is super important. Mm. And Daniel Lewis Crumpton, the author of Then Came the Flood, also the guy, which you can get on Amazon, but you can also get at his website, downloadedcontent.com, along with a bevy of other pieces of media as well some of them free some of them not like the book you got to actually pay for although there's a few chapters available i think for people to read yeah it's chuck ochilla he got everything from a little eye joe to dan if i know <laughs> there we go <laughs> yeah, man, what's up? sorry guys i missed the first hour no um, not a problem listen it was just me yelling and screaming about uh, trump and terrorist attacks in england and stuff like that which you know the day's news who cares listen uh <laughs> It's it's getting to be a strange world. I, I feel like reciting lines from movies today, Daniel. I, I got to tell you, do you, do you know what one of my favorite scenes in a, in a movie was when I was a kid is from the movie Conan. You remember Conan the Barbarian actually starred, starred the uh, you know later on to be the governor, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Remember that movie? Hell yeah, dog. What's up? Oh, I love it. You remember preach, that? Uh, preach it, brother. Preach it. Remember that scene when he's learning to be a gladiator and Conan, what is good in life? <laughs> you remember that one? Refresh my memory because uh, you just dated yourself, dog. <laughs> yeah, I know that. But you know what? I, I, It's okay. Because as I said to JP last night, you know what? We, we look at the conflict between the millennials and the baby boomers and we forget about the fact that there's this whole other space occupied by lunatics like me in between that are not necessarily convinced one way or the other. Okay. Uh, For, before but we anyhow. go any further, this is American Freedom Radio, right? Well, last yeah. time I checked. Okay, just making sure. I might have to rant for a second. Uh, I didn't know if I was on American Freedom Radio or Anonymous Radio because evidently Anonymous Radio just like keeps Skyping 
like trying to bring me into some Skype call that's unscheduled, and this has happened like 17 freaking times this week. So, like, I didn't know if I got brought into American Freedom Radio or Anonymous Radio. I mean, I know that they say expect us, but it's like, do we have to expect you every 15 minutes when I have no idea what you're <laughs> Skyping me for? You haven't sent me, like, a, you haven't booked me to come on your show. We haven't scheduled anything. I have no idea why my Skype is going off. I do know that somebody like Chuck was polite enough to let me know in advance we'd be doing a regular thing every week at a, certain, at a specific time to talk about, you know, whatever, this or that or whatever the news of the day is. But, you know, like when that appointed time came and then I see American Freedom Radio on Skype, I go, oh, look, this was actually planned. This was actually scheduled. This was actually pre-prepared. And I have <clears throat> an idea as to why I'm seeing American Freedom Radio pop up on my Skype. But when like Anonymous, I mean, what are they, when Anonymous pops up, can we expect like you to bring like muffins next time or maybe like an apple cinnamon pie or something? Does it have to be just this black hole of an invitation to come on some type of a radio show thing that you have no idea about did not like have no foreknowledge and did you're the you're the asshole when you don't pick up you're the asshole when you don't go on air because all of a sudden you just didn't expect anonymous radio all of a sudden whoever anonymous radio is i don't know they're anonymous but i do know that whenever i see anonymous radio and then there's a bunch of names afterwards I'm like, well, you're not so anonymous now, are you? I mean, now I know what your names are, so you can't really be anonymous. Should you be the people who are Skyping me, formerly known as anonymous? I'm not really quite sure how to understand this. But, Chuck, I do want to extend you and American Freedom Radio my sincerest uh, thanks for actually letting me know that there is a radio show that exists, uh, that it is you know, featured on X, Y, and Z networks and can be found at certain places, uh, that you do have a regular format and time, and you have you know, some type of a speaking framework of, of topics in which you deal with, and letting me know that I was welcome to come on and at what times and then skyping me at the appropriate time so i really appreciate that thanks guys bang up job <laughs> okay. just saying all right you know daniel can, can oh. i love you. i love you man i really I'm just do saying, dude. Man, I'm not even, look, I'm not even, like, all that important in a guy. Yeah, I'm a writer and a public figure and stuff, but I put my pants on, like, one leg at a time, and I'm pretty lax, I'm pretty cool, I'm pretty chill, I'm pretty accessible and everything, so it really takes a lot to kind of get me, you know, to where I'm like this, to where I'm like, dude, really, 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 dude, really, really, okay, what are you doing, dude? I'm a cool guy, okay? Like, I smoke weed for a living, all right? And it's like, I don't let nothing get under my skin. But it's like, beep, 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 Skype, anonymous, radio. It's like, what are you talking about? What, what, man, what, it, dude, what if I'm hacking up a body in my office and I just feel obligated to hit, like, answer on Skype and you hear me with a hacksaw or some other compromising situation? What do I just go with the punches if I'm on the air with you? If you magically just throw this lariat of an invitation onto some type of a radio thing, you just throw it out there, and then I whatever I happen that. to be doing at the time, I just bring it on air with me. And it could be. Yes. I think they'd like that. And especially the body part. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Big show. Yeah, big show. It's like, dude, man, <laughs> what the hell? Jesus, can I get a witness? You, you got <laughs> one. Uh, Sherry, Sherry, can, can he get a witness? How about you? <laughs> well, I I uh, am also on that list, <clears throat> I'm just going to say. And so I think Chuck Ocelli is also on that list. Um, we So we're very familiar with, with okay. what you are talking about, yeah. All right, just make it sure, dog, because I'm like, I don't know what this is, all right? I just know it pops up on Skype, and I don't know anybody. I mean, it's kind of like an unspoken etiquette. Before you Skype somebody, you shoot them like a quick text message and go, hey, can you Skype? Is that just me, or is that, do you guys do that? Well, we do, but it, we're like a different, so I think that that was kind of created. Wow, mine's going up again. Um, <clears throat> see, see what I'm it, talking about. I, <laughs> is that is that anonymous radio, Sherry? <laughs> is it? Is it? Mother effer. <laughs> Did you expect them? Did you expect them, Sherry? Because they came, dog. They came on your sky. You didn't expect that, did you? Jesus, nobody expects a Spanish Inquisition. These dudes, man. God damn. Sorry. That was like I that was divine timing. Oh, that was super funny. Oh, wow. And it's like now I'm the asshole, right? 
okay? I don't know who these people are, who's behind it, but I'm sure that, like, this will get around. You hear what Daniel said about Anonymous? We're going to hack his shit. No, you're not. I know who you are. I know who you are. (laughs) Derp, 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 derp. You're not anonymous if you say you're an anonymous, dude. What are you doing? Wow. Okay. Oh, God. So I want to know who's responsible. And, like, I just want to, like, wait until – I want to put – man, I want to get a drone. I want to get a drone and fly it out whoever's responsible's house and wait till he goes to, like, Pornhub or something and goes and gets his juicy bits and then Skype that dude all night long. Just start Skyping. What's up? What's up, dude? What's up? Oh, were you busy? Well, you didn't expect this, did you? Nah, it ain't it ain't anonymous, dude. It's me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, dude. What's, in, what's up with in, your category choices, dude? Knock it off, all right? You didn't expect that, did you? Huh? Oh wow. Jesus. You know, in in fairness, Daniel, you you can block people on Skype. <laughs> sure. Well, but now I'm the asshole. You know. Ah, oh, did you hear what he said? We were just trying to be nice and invite him to our roundtable of whatever. Dude, dude, man, no, dude. Oh, man, I got, dude, I got a power button on my computer. I got off, off, an off and on switch, dude. And when I turn that magical button off, there's like a whole nother reality. And it's more tangible and more real to me than when the the power button on my computer's on. Okay? So it's like, dude, man, I mean, I have doors on my house and they open and they shut. If they're shut, that means you probably need to knock. If it's locked and shut, Please don't come around here no more, like Tom Petty said. What's up? Just saying wow. that. But now I'm the prick, okay? All right, I'm probably going to be the prick, right? All right, dude. Just say now, it. During, during this whole rant, just for the record, I didn't get a call. <laughs> 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 which which I, I know why. And you know why? Because I already freaked out on somebody off the air about this. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're ahead of the curve. I just have to do it. I happen to do it live, so now I'm. I'm, the di- I'm just sitting here laughing because, <laughs> and and just the other day, I think uh, Sherry and I were in a text conversation where somebody dragged me into a group call all of a sudden, and I said, uh, you know, what what is this basically? And oh, it's an invite, and I'm like, yeah, okay, and then I just left the conversation. <laughs> And, and that was it. It was like, okay, but I know I've already had this discussion but with people. Uh, so I guess the deal is, is you guys got, I mean, again, you know, I got to be the devil's advocate here because they're just, they're so young. Is well, that what it is? Some of them, yeah, the, I think literally, I don't think he's old enough to drink. Who? Anonymous? I, yeah. Okay. I thought it was like a group of people. It is a group of people. It is a group, but there's one in particular who organized all that because all these people who are, are, um, um, hmm, I can't come up with a good, nice word. So, oh, okay, okay, well, look, that. don't, how about this? Don't confuse Anonymous Radio with Anonymous. Anonymous is not really an organization. It's more of an right. idea and so right. on and so forth. But this Anonymous Radio US and there's an Anonymous Radio UK and so on and so forth um, is run by a particular person who we know. Right. And uh, yeah, I, look, but, but, but here you are being the excuse lady, not only the creator of the three day rule, but the excuse generator. Uh, for a lot of people, Sherry. I don't know. I don't know why. I, today, you, you hit my 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 yeah, mommy happy. day, I guess, or something. Like, I'm just trying to, you know, like, like, be nice to everybody. I'm not usually like that, so I must be getting ready to start my period or something. So. Oh, wow. Okay, well, that was information <laughs> I didn't expect. <laughs> Which leads into another three-day rule. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my God, Daniel! That was very witty. That was very funny. Thank you. So I, I write for a living. So so Skype battering aside, yeah. uh, Daniel. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. I, is I, there uh, anything, look, is, oh, look, is there anything on? Uh, I'm sorry. Is, is is there anything on your mind tonight that isn't going to cause me to have to mute my microphone and just sit here laughing hysterically? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, I don't know if Anonymous is, like, listening to me. Nothing personal, you know, but schedule. <laughs> schedule ahead. <laughs> you know what I mean? Man, dude, for real. Because oh. I wouldn't have went off either if it hadn't happened, like, right before you guys Skyped me in. 
because I was waiting for you guys because we, I don't know, scheduled. Yeah, well, you know, we, we have this understanding that on Wednesdays, <laughs> you'll yeah. be doing one or two hours. And we communicated earlier. I said, well, I'd like you to join in the second hour today. And you said, sure, that was it. It sounds like a plan is usually your response. And uh, that that's where we go. I mean, uh, I, 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 I don't know. People do that to me, too, where it's like, you know, yeah, three need, o'clock I, in the I, morning. I, I, I don't need much foreplay. Just let me no. know. Hey, I, I got you. Let me know you're available. <laughs> You know, and I'll show up if, if, if scheduling permits. But, man, don't be trying to rape me. Mm-hmm. Trying to no, rape I, me. I, I hear you. You know, 3 o'clock in the morning, you forget to – 3 o'clock in the morning, you forget to shut down your Skype, and it's, you know, it's beep, like – uh, Yeah. Hey, you want to talk about neo-Nazi communistic fascism capitalism? No, I no. really don't. No, no, I don't. No, oh, no, I, no I'm going to kill you. I'm, Wait, gonna read, uh, I'm about to go read How to Be Your Dog's Best Friend by the Monks of Nooski. Can you leave me alone for a minute? All right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> has <Yeah>. the... Uh, <laughs> has, has the new Wolverine movie come out yet? <laughs> Logan? Yeah, dude. Already did a review. Where you been? Uh, that that's why I was asking you. I was throwing you a softball to try and change directions here. Oh, <laughs> and he then throws it under the bus. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, well, you know, again, none of this is ever scripted, as you can tell. Um We're all but, sport, uh, but fumbled. <laughs> right. So so what about it? What about the uh, the new the new Logan movie, which is like Old Man Logan and Weapon X is introduced, it looks like based on the trailers I've seen. What do you think, man? Switching gears to Logan for real. I'll do that real quick, but I already did like two hours on it, so I ain't gonna exasperate it. Um, man, that was to me, and I, and I and I'm not the first person to say this. That was the Dark Knight in the Marvel universe, which was for Marvel. Uh, they they they're doing quite successful with their MCU and everything, and I'm real happy with what they're doing with Netflix. I'm a big comic book guy, and I think that the way that they're handling this the film translation of those books from my childhood has been absolutely fantastic and they have done no wrong. Uh, but when they did this, this last Wolverine movie, Logan, they created something that stands so separate, so apart. Uh, and I'm not going to say above cause that's it. I'm not going to say that because you really can't compare Logan to any of these other movies at all. And I'm talking about from the way that it's written to the way that it's filmed to the way that it's acted. This movie is a standalone masterpiece. You don't even you don't have to be a comic book geek, you know, uh, at all to enjoy this movie. It might help to know a little bit, but you know, obviously they take uh, a lot of different royalties with the mythos of the old man Logan storyline from the comics and the origins of X twenty three, because you got so many different studios that have the rights to characters, uh, so you got to work with what you got, right? And for for them to have taken the concept of Old Man Logan, which was, you know, and I love stories like that where the hero of the story is uh, the odds are stacked against him. Okay, I love those types of stories. They're at the end of their days uh, or there's some type of a weakness, some type of an internal and, and external thing that they got to go through. And they did it perfect with Logan. Okay, uh, the way that Hugh Jackman played him. You know, I mean, even he's got arthritis for Christ's sake. So when he goes to pop his claws, like either they don't pop out all the way or one kind of springs up and down, <laughs> you know, little things like that. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, and, not, uh, and, not, and I'm not demeaning what Hugh Jackman did with the character at all, but uh, Heath, Heath Ledger got an Academy Award for the Joker. It is only fair if this, if, you know, if the world is fair and just and the universe makes sense that Patrick Stewart get an Oscar for his role as Professor Xavier in that film, man. Because he he will mm. literally rip your heart out uh, playing, you know, a guy who is the most powerful psychic in the world. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but is suffering from some type of brain degenerative disorder. So it's yeah. like that mind is turned against him. And, you know, anybody who has loved ones who you've had to see get old and get weak and get frail... Patrick Stewart nailed it. I think he dropped like 20 pounds 
you know, and his mannerisms, his gestures as somebody who's suffering from something, you know, inside of his head, man, he did fantastic. And dude, if it don't make you cry, I'm sorry, man. You're a sissy. <laughs> uh, so there, there is a lot more to this than uh, than I thought. Based on the trailer, the trailer doesn't uh, no. deliver the justice that it deserves. I no. guess so. This is, and yes, it is rated R. And yes, all the Wolverine fans have been waiting for a rated R movie. It's obvious why it's rated R, but they don't they they don't shove the rated R stuff in your face. Okay, yes, it is more brutal. Uh, when he pops those claws in this movie, you get to see what kind of damage that would really do. You know, like in other X-Men movies, we've seen like a little bit of blood on his claws, but everything is implied. But this movie shows you if you had adamantium claws coming out your your fist and that could cut through anything, it shows you what, what that would leave behind. Okay, it's a rough, rough movie. And there's really not that much action in the story, which I thought was even cooler. Because when the action does happen, it counts. There's a lot of emotional buildup to every action scene. So it really, really counts. So it's not, you know, your typical superhero movie. We'll see how, how much stuff we can blow up. In terms of, like, the conflict between Logan and the antagonist, on the scale of superhero movies, it's extremely low, okay? The main anta- antagonist is, like, a scientist. And he's not even physically imposing to Logan. But it's one of the best you know, a clash of, of two different ideologies and the hero and villain thing that, that you're ever going to see. It was fantastic. Now, uh, that being said, everybody probably knows by now that the little girl that you see in the trailers is X-23, right? Do you know about this character, Chuck or Sherry? I know a little bit about it. Do you know anything about the character, Sherry? She's muted. Well, she might be fighting with her cable again. Or anonymous, uh, yeah. anonymous, um, got her, dude. An anonymous kidnapped Sherry. That might be the explanation. But uh, go, go ahead anyway, uh, Daniel. But you know, I don't want you to go too too terribly into this because, as you said, you'd already done yeah. quite a bit on it. But I just wanted to get like your overall feeling about it yeah. because uh, really, what I want to check out with you is: Have you checked out? Uh, you know, look, we 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 both watched part of Daredevil together. Yeah. Right. Uh, when they introduced the Punisher character into the Daredevil theme. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I know that Punisher is supposed to come out now. I don't have Netflix right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, have you seen any movement on that? Because I'm kind of waiting on that one. I, I'm I'm kind of partial to the Punisher to, character. To, yeah. Uh, well, well, I I actually um I didn't realize it until you know after me and you had watched Daredevil. Uh, Luke Cage came out and Jessica Jones was somewhere in there and so I checked out Luke Cage and I'm a big Luke Cage fan I loved him from the from the New Avengers uh, it takes a few episodes to get into but mm-hmm. once you once you let it build up it does pretty good and so I went through that whole first season and then uh, I was like oh well they got this Jessica Jones and I was like what are they going to do with this character because in the comics when she pops up she was just Luke Cage's wife she didn't really do much but that was an excellent show, okay? And then it dawned on me after I finished with Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, because we know that, that the Punisher is about to come out. It dawned on me because they advertised the new, the new Marvel one, uh, Iron Fist, uh, that what they're doing, and I think it's brilliant, and it, hit, it took me by surprise, is they're taking Daredevil, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and the new Punisher, uh, and they're going to intertwine all of them as the defenders because there's another subgroup under the avengers in marvel comics and it's the defenders and all of those guys are a part of it so i'm thinking that what they're going to do is when iron fist is done with season one then you're going to get your frank castle series and somehow or another they're going to cause all the netflix series is to eventually merge with the avengers movies that looks like where it looks like where they're going makes sense if you're a comic fan Mm. But um, I, I, what I do know is because Punisher was, is going to be on Netflix, and we already saw it in Daredevil, uh, and there's, you know, I guess there's no rating, they can show Frank Castle the way that Frank Castle is in the comic books, and it's not pretty. I mean, this no. dude, uh, Frank Castle, the reason you know he's, I like him anyway is because there is not one hero or metahuman in the Marvel Universe that he's come across that he hasn't put into the dirt. 
Spider-Man included, you know, the Hulk, all of them. And he's not even superpowered. He's just a guy. You know, and the only, I guess his superpower is anger. You know, he's angry. And well, that's what I love about him, yeah, is that he actually is not, you know, he wasn't bitten by something radioactive. He wasn't damaged in a scientific experiment. He's not from another planet. He's just pissed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. Yeah. He's the result of trauma because somebody took his family from him. And so, you know, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that show. Iron Fist is pretty good. Um, I'm about five episodes deep. Uh, like all these Marvel Netflix shows, give them a few episodes and you'll start to see what Marvel is doing with them. You know, even on these are what's called uh, tier two characters. You know, most people know who Spider-Man is, but not so many people know who, say, uh, Danny Rand is. You know what I mean? But so, well, Nick Nick Cage was a character I'd never heard of until the Netflix series. Luke Cage. So, yeah, Luke Cage. Sorry, Luke Cage. Yeah, Nick yeah. Cage. Wow, what what a weird slip there. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, Luke Cage. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Luke Cage is a new Avenger. Uh, him, whenever he came out back in like the seventies or the eighties, it was uh, Power Man and Iron Fist. And so, they, of course, they're those two characters were really dated in the, in the seventies. You know, with afros and bell bottoms and stuff. So how Marvel, um, when Ralph Macchio wasn't like the editor in chief of Marvel anymore, Marvel did like an overhaul of their sub tier, their their tier two characters, and Luke Cage was one of those guys that really came to the forefront as a revamped character, uh, and you know so I love him and you know from the comics and they did pretty good you know in the show uh, I like the fact that he's the only superhero that I know of in Marvel that's from Georgia, which is cool, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it's it's better to see a superhero from Georgia as opposed to uh, what we seem to uh, uh, get greeted with <laughs> in the real world. You know, uh, the UN ambassador and uh, you know and these other people that are coming out. A uh, mm-hmm. little little bit strange, you know, uh, Governor Deal. You know, mm-hmm. th- th- those individuals that make headlines. Uh, it, it's at least nice to see somebody with uh, good intentions somewhere, even if it's fictional. Coming from Georgia, right? Yeah, right. You know, um, the, 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 walking de- the Walking Dead survivors, you know, they came out of Georgia. Okay? Yeah, it's, just, it's too bad it had to be a fictional character that represents Georgia, you know, but whatever. We'll take yeah, well, the, 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 and by fictional, here's the funny part, is you're talking about, you know, The Walking Dead was a comic book that didn't feature the character that is the most popular character on the TV show. Uh, that's what you mean, right? Yeah. Yeah, which happens to be the most, I don't know, if it, is Georgia-centric a phrase? Georgia-centric character probably uh, is, is him. He's probably the most, right? Daryl, yeah. And mm. what, what I find so funny is these guys who, who are playing, you know, like they're from Georgia, most of them are British, which I think is, <laughs> is so funny. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's hysterical, especially, uh, you know, Rick Rick Grimes. Carl and Warrior and Aura. and this dude, meanwhile, you talk to him normally, he's like, well, you know, when I was playing, Rick, I was probably good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's total anaphylactic shock. I didn't, uh, when I first heard that guy off the show, I was like, that dude's not from Georgia? Are you serious? He does a good job with the accent, man. He does a really good job. Yeah, he, he's a right proper geezer, he is. But... <laughs> <laughs> playing my, playing my, a character from Georgia. Go ahead. You know, when, when my days in Juilliard taught me. It really prepared me for dealing with zombies and the post-apocalyptic world of, uh, you know, the Bible Belt. So, thank you, Juilliard. <laughs> right. Wow. Uh, but anyway, you know, and, and look, I, I didn't want to simply get into a, a bunch of, you know, pop culture stuff with you, but it's always fun to do it because you, you have a different slant on it than other people do. Um and and meanwhile, we've already killed like half of the hour <laughs> doing this. I, I I wonder what else is on your mind though, because you know I, I know you're not clinging to the news cycle, no. okay? Which uh, you know makes you a better man than me at the moment, uh, because I'm losing my mind watching this stuff. And that that's what I was yelling about in the first hour is is you know the ridiculousness. There was a terrorist attack in the UK today. I don't know if you heard about that. Nope. But um, meanwhile, what's what's on your plate? Well, you know what I mean? As far as things you're paying attention to in the world, what do you see? Because it's it's always good to hear something other than the nonsense that, uh, you know, <laughs> that well, you man, have to gather to keep up with current events. Well, um, yeah, I've kind of uh, collapsed my periscope 
on what I choose to pay attention to and focus on, you know, and, and I think that's probably healthy to do for me and a lot of other people, but, uh, so I'm, I'm isolating what I'm, my concentration on things that really are important to me. And unfortunately, you know, I was doing the, uh, me and Jason Patrick were doing the weekly or the daily updates, um, regarding the, the second set of trials out in Oregon. And, um, Basically, every day after after court, we would get on Skype, and I'd record about you know an hour, and he would fill fill the audience in on what was going on. And uh, so, anybody who's been following the Jason Patrick project, you know, that's on the podcast. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, last week uh, a verdict did come back from the jury. Uh, mm. So uh, the the verdict came back. Now, what people really need to understand about the second set of trials is. Uh, this time, uh, the judge uh, or the courts or the state or whatever thought that it would be a good idea to set some type of a precedent and uh, simultaneously have a uh, felony case happening with a misdemeanor case. Um, and, of course, the defendants were denied a right to a jury trial on those misdemeanors. Uh, the judge even stated in open court that, she did not know if if they get the right to a jury trial or not, but if they did, she wouldn't even give it give it to them. Okay, so we kind of know where um, Judge Brown's thinking was from the beginning regarding these guys, you know. Uh, hmm. And so now, the, now for anybody who might have forgotten, let's let's go back on this just a little bit. We are talking about the incident in Oregon where the wildlife refuge. This is what everybody remembers anyway. The wildlife refuge was sort of uh, taken over by a group of individuals who were self-described patriots. One of them was Jason Patrick, who was in with the group. I dare say was not a leader among the group. Okay, but this uh, definitely ties back to the Bundy situation and all that. And uh, in case people are not quite getting the references here yeah. and uh, maybe have forgotten who Jason is, because I'm telling you right now, I mentioned his name to some people and they don't remember what he's tied to anymore because there's been no real coverage of the second trial ever since the acquittal of others based on some really interesting grounds and the deal making of some others. Uh, nobody really paid all that much attention to this second round of trials, Daniel. Yeah, man. See what that YouTube attention span is doing to people? It's messing mm. them up, dude. Uh, yeah, the, the Oregon ref, yeah, everybody remembers the, the mainstream media paid it out to be like it was a siege, which was no, nothing, it wasn't, that resembled the truth in no way. But right. uh, Bun, the Bundys, who most people know them, Ammon Bundy, Ryan Bundy, and, and all that, um, they had their round of trials a few months ago, and they were all acquitted, okay, not guilty. Which, that was fantastic. I mean, I, everybody knows I didn't agree with everything that happened at the refuge, but I thought that was a good win. That was a, that was a plus, you know? Well, um, no, ne look, ne neither one of us agreed with the methodology utilized, but understood hmm. uh, the, the general point that was being made, okay? Uh, I think that's a fair statement to make. But quite honestly, I'm a little shocked at the fact that uh, Jason got treated the way he did mm -hmm. because I would have thought, you know, the courts would have been a whole lot more likely to uh, to seek to incarcerate Ammon and uh, and these other guys way ahead of Jason Patrick. I thought, you know, it was it was a given that they were probably going to dismiss charges against him because they had already lost the case. As far as I was concerned, I mean, how is it in the same incident? You can turn around and convict some people, but not others. It, it, very weird thing happening here. Well, Daniel. it yeah, it is, and and uh, I think that after the acquittal of the first guys, um, the state was like, Shh, you know, we have got to get some pound of flesh for this. We cannot let this incident pass without some blood on the slate, man. Some people mm -hmm. behind bars, because if they were to get uh, acquittals all across the board. What is that going to say to other activists out there who, ha are, you know, are just as frustrated with the government as they were? What's going to happen next? What armed protest is going to happen? And I'm not making a commentary on that, okay? I'm just examining the psychology of people out there. When is the next armed refuge going to happen, takeover going to happen? And 
what level is it going to be taken to? You know, th these are questions that pop up, and I think the federal government was like, "There's, we've got to do everything that we can think of to get some some convictions here, no matter what, to mm. balance things out." And so the introduction of these misdemeanor charges in the second round of, of uh, defendants was, I think, that was an obvious attempt because here's the deal, dude: the jury was aware of the first round of acquittals. But the right. judge would not allow the jury in this round of trials to know that not only were the defendants facing uh, felony charges, but they were also facing misdemeanor charges. So when the jury was deliberating and listening to evidence, they didn't know that. Okay, And so mm -hmm. in their minds, I can see them as Oregonians going, okay, look, we need to, we need to make some type of a statement here and, and let people know that – it's not acceptable to just go into a you know a building or whatever and take it over. So, you know, I could see that. Okay, I haven't seen any interviews with jurors stating that. I could just see that happening, and and hoping to give them a minimum sentence or, or something. But if the jury had known that, regardless of if the jury acquitted them or not, Judge Brown was going to throw something at them, no matter what, I think that would have changed the outcome of it. But where it stands is all of the defendants were found guilty of at least something. Uh, Jason was found guilty of a conspiracy to impede. Um, he was also found guilty on some of the misdemeanors, but I haven't gotten the exact charges yet. And uh, sentencing was going to be held in May. Now, when uh, uh, yesterday, whenever Judge Brown read the, uh, the verdict of the misdemeanor trials, uh, they I insisted that until sentencing, Jason Patrick be fitted with an ankle monitor. Um, so it had been his plans, as far as I know, and, and on our public discussions, that he was going to come to Georgia, you know, for a minute. He was allowed to do that, um, visit his, his children, you know, come and visit me, and, and then go back to face sentencing. Um, and so they wanted to fit him with a, a, an ankle monitor, and Jason, being Jason Patrick, refused. And so, as of yesterday, Jason Patrick was taken into custody to, to begin a sentence, um, which carries a maximum of 10.5 years uh, with an appeal process that is going to take no less than two years. Right. Now, the first way that I read it was it looked like uh, six years was the, uh, was the way that it might uh, – you, you give us the maximum, but it looked like uh, theoretically he could walk out in six years without any victory in appeal or whatever. Yeah. Um, is that right? It's in that ballpark. Uh, I've seen that the maximum is 10.5, but they're looking anywhere between 6 to 7 and 7.5, with 5.5 already served. Mm. So. Yeah, that's what I thought, is that it was 6.5, and, and then since he had already served a half a year, uh, that, uh, that that would be where it would go. But, it, look, I, I understand the situation to some degree, but when we put it in context with the fact that uh, wh where where is the coverage on the charges in Nevada, right? Uh, what's happening there? Because a lot of the people that got off in Oregon were still facing charges in Nevada mm -hmm. over the Bundy Ranch thing, which is connected because of the Bundys themselves. Yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, if, and if, if you hadn't, because like I was saying, where will this go if there's acquittals across the board? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you wouldn't have had a, a, a Malheur Refuge protest if uh, the Bundy standoff hadn't have propelled that. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, that's exactly my point. And now what's happening, though, is that all of it is coming back. And I think it is uh, uh, very much... <sighs> I, I don't know what it's done, but I do remember when there was no immediate response from uh, from the courts to the Bundy standoff. This did embolden people to uh, to to get more active, and I think that might have actually led to part of what happened up in Oregon um, because there wasn't an immediate you know bunch of arrests and charges and this and that and people having to deal with this you know long process of defending themselves that didn't happen so i think they were kind of emboldened by it but now we're watching it all get reeled back in it looks like mm -hmm. and i'm wondering if anybody's going to escape without uh you know without yeah. being made an example of i mean what do you think of that yeah i mean that was my first thoughts too is you know these convictions here it, it most certainly is going to have an effect when the bundies get to nevada uh on you know and the jury sees all that it's going to have an effect 
<clears throat> and uh, might not be pretty. It might not be pretty for mm. those guys. So um, I don't know. I mean, uh, before I, you know, after I talked to Jason, after the the verdict was read, you know, he's a spiritual guy. He has his faith, and and you know, he was. He said, "Well, if there had been no conviction, then." there would be no uh, possibility of an appeal process. He said, so, you know, he's he's content that he's being guided in that direction because, you know, with the appeals process, I guess you can go higher into the courts and all that. Um, so he's accepted that that's kind of the path that he's on. I mean, it's not like he's got a choice now, right? Um, so, yeah, but, yeah, it's going to have an effect in Nevada. Um, mm. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have an effect on you know, whatever is left of the liberty movement or whatever, uh, most certainly, you know. Well, I think it already has because there, there's been quite a chill and there's also been the bleeding off of people thinking that somehow, and here I go bringing it up, that somehow the uh, the outsider election of Trump and the move to the right that the electorate took in 2016. Yeah, the show goes uh, on, bro. The show yeah. goes on. But but the funny thing is that there are people that have actually stated to me that they think that there was some kind of victory here because and, – and these are people that called themselves patriots before because all of a sudden, gee, the GOP has greater control over this mess. You know, I, I – I'm having a hard time understanding that. You know, I get it that a lot of the people that agreed with Ron Paul on a lot of stuff – were liberty-minded people, and Ron Paul was a GOP candidate. I get that. Um, I get that he was, you know, a, a, a standard classic kind of conservative in a way, and I get that this sort of swims together, but what I don't get is how they think that somehow before they weren't being represented or the people's wishes weren't being represented by this, uh, you know, nonsensical electoral process – but now they are because people that they agree with a bit more got in. So somehow that's a victory. I think that got uh, some of the very shallow thinkers out of the game. I think that uh, some people were terrified out because there might be legal ramifications for it. I think that uh, because no media is paying attention to this at this moment, there's that contingent that really liked the attention Okay, and you know that there were people like that in the movement. Oh, yeah. They really like the attention that are gone as well. I think that uh, actually it's a pretty successful bleed out of the patriot movement here is what I'm, is what I'm watching. And I know that that sounds kind of harsh, yeah, but well, am, am I out of line? No, dude. I mean, and you know as a result of the, uh, of the Oregon standoff, dude, that's why I hung up my, my activist spurs in that arena. Because I said, no, <clears throat> you know. You, you, you don't fish in the desert and you know what I mean? So, right. uh, I, now that don't, I'm not, when I say that, I don't mean that the, uh, the whole move for freedom and personal liberty and all that, you should just give up on it. No, it, it, in my, just in my particular path, it's moved into more, uh, metaphysical and consciousness based rather than, <clears throat> um, physically showing anything, you know? Um, so that's just me, but, in my opinion, what 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 kind of started with the Ron Paul revolution and physically manifested as, as a swath of activists that wanted to restore the republic? No, nah, it's not going to work that way anymore. Uh, it's, it's especially after this, you know, it's just not going to work anymore. So that means that exactly what I said a few years back is going to be required. There's going to need to be some innovation here. And I'm hoping that the up-and-coming generation sees this and, uh, and understands that if they are interested in preserving any semblance of their own freedom, uh, that they're going to have to uh, go about it in a different way. Mm -hmm. What do yeah. you think? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to have to come from a different place, uh, you know, within. It's got to come from within. But uh, before we do get too short on time, I do want to give... Uh, um, some contact information out there uh, in case people want to write or, or you know help Jason out if that's okay. Oh no, absolutely. Uh, because uh, I'll tell you that regardless of any disagreements I had with actions over this and that and the third thing and uh, whatever 
people might perceive. I mean, I've actually had people thinking that I was saying bad things about Jason. I, I'm absolutely supportive of him as an individual. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and and think that he has been unjustly incarcerated uh, in this case. And he has been unjustly treated by the system in many others. So I want to make that very clear, first of all, from my own point of view. Uh, so absolutely, any information you want to give to uh, give, you know, for contact or for uh, people to keep up with the story or to get in touch with him or help him out, yeah. absolutely, brother, go. All right. Uh, and, guys, I, I, I do want you to know, I mean, it, 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 I know him personally, so I'm going to be in this for the long haul. But imagine if somebody that you, you know, your dad or your brother or your son uh, is put into a cage and probably won't come back out for another 10 years. You, you'd want to do something to let them know that you're there and, and to give them some type of hope. So uh, if you guys want to mail Jason, <clears throat> excuse me, it's uh, Jason Patrick. The number is, uh, his inmate number is 795104. Uh the address, I suppose, is 11540 Northeast Ivernus Drive, Portland, Oregon, 97220. Um, if you want to email him, it's letters to Jason 620 at gmail.com. Uh, those get printed out and, and they'll be sent to him. And if you want to call him directly, I suppose you go to www. Are you supposed to still say that anymore? Or you just say the website. I don't think we need the W's anymore, but go ahead. My bad. Sorry. Uh, you go to touchpaydirect.com, and that's the commissary. Um, also, there's a GoFundMe forward slash Jason Patrick, and uh, those funds help his family out and help him out You know, to, to get commissary. Um, I would urge people to please go to that GoFundMe account and, uh, and put something in there, man, because being in jail sucks. Being in jail without commissary sucks balls. It's bad. So, you know, help him out. And um, me and his sister are going to be working together. We're going to figure out how uh, I can still get weekly or monthly updates from him uh, via Skype while he's, he's in there. But that will be down the road. Uh, obviously, they need time to adjust and process what's going on as, as well as he does. But uh, don't forget about this guy, man. This guy was out there doing stuff for your rights and your freedoms that – you have no clue about any minute from the heart. Uh, and, you know, he was willing to go to jail for it, you know. And so don't don't forget about this guy. You know, uh, I know he's going to be doing the appeals thing. So all you legal heads out there, uh, any of you paralegals or, or, or liberty activists that go through Shepard citations, get on the ball and help him build, a, uh, build something for an appeal, you know. So... That's what I got to say about Jason, man. He's a good guy, and he really, really believes in this stuff. And uh, I think he's unjustly behind bars too, man. It was a suck, uh, a series of events that got him there. But at the end of the day, he didn't really, in my opinion, commit any crime. <sighs> you know, I just I don't see it. No, exactly. Look, this guy is not dangerous to anybody except those that uh, would seek to uh, uh, take away your personal liberty without any explanation or justification. Uh, that's that's the only person he's ever been dangerous to is people like that and the people that want to slip things by you without having you be informed, stuff like that. Um, this is exactly who Jason Patrick is and uh, has been for quite some time. So, uh, no, definitely. And the only thing is, uh, you know, I, I, I say at all times, I, I I don't know what to do, you know what I mean, when it comes to uh, trying to help somebody out uh, when they're in a position like this, but you just laid it out. So, good. Uh, can you just spell the name of the uh, street there for yeah. people? Because, you know, give that address one more time if they want to write to them directly yeah. and spell the name of the street. Yeah, the, uh, the street is uh, 11540 Northeast Inverness, I N. V E R N E S S Drive. And that's in Portland, Oregon. 97220 is the zip. And uh, the email is letters to Jason620 at gmail.com. There we go. Because uh, I'll tell you what, even if it's not a dollar, uh, a, a contact, you know, letting them know that you appreciate what he did or whatever else, or that uh, you're even at least uh, thinking of him at, at some point in time. Yeah. 
could uh, could do a, a whole world of good for for a guy who was trying to do a world of good for you. Yeah, and if you guys if you guys weren't privy to it, you can't go to downloadacontent.com and uh, under the podcast. Uh, if you isolate the ones that say Jason Patrick update, we did an update as the trial was happening. It was about an every two day uh, thing, and you can go back and listen to a blow by blow of what was happening in the courtroom. Um, you know, if you want to familiarize yourself with, with what exactly happened. Well, there you go. And yeah, we are running low on time, but um, definitely uh, glad that you that you interjected that into it. Of course, downloadedcontent.com is your site. The Jason Patrick Project is usually what I see uh, you release stuff under uh, over there. But there are these uh, these audio updates with with him. Uh, going through the trial, and uh, definitely, if you guys haven't been paying attention, it is there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, let's try and bring this all around. Sherry, by the way, have you straightened out your microphone? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just listening. <laughs> okay, because, no, before we tried to call on you and uh, couldn't get you. Oh, yes, well, it's happened a few times, and that's, I'm sorry, and I'm kind of, I, every time Daniel starts talking about something, it sends me into rabbit holes because I start researching some of the stuff or whatever it is, and all of a sudden I'm, you know, doing the sherry thing. <clears throat> it's okay. <laughs> doing the sherry. Well, I'm glad you're doing the sherry thing because if you were doing the Mary thing, I'd be asking a lot of other questions. Do I oh, put you, okay. Do, yeah. do, I, do I put you in a trance, Sherry? <laughs> do, you oh, like, God. do you like the sound and tone of my voice, the cadence and rhythm of my words? Oh, I just can't tell you what it does to me, Daniel. We just went from three days to six, didn't we, Shandy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we set a new world. <laughs> Before we do go, can I plug something yes. else there, Chuck? Go ahead. I ate. Uh, of course, I came out last week uh, on your show and talked about can of and I want to bring that back up to people's attention because I was booked by like six other radio shows after I did that, and... I'll tell you something, if you guys go to downloadedcontent.com, up at the top there's a Can of Sense Total Wellness tab. It's got my testimony and some excerpts from radio shows explaining the program. Um, since I started doing it, man, I have signed up so many people that are, are, you know, yesterday I was on the phone for about an hour and a half with a 60-something-year-old lady who'd had two back surgeries, and they were talking about putting her on some more Percocet. And she said that she had come across a flyer that I'd put out at a local park, and she wanted to get on medical marijuana because she wasn't going to destroy her body that way. You know, I I talked to a lady in New Jersey for two and a half hours the other day that uh, has, you know, a lot of degenerative disorders and a tumor that she's worried about. And I, you know, took the time to answer all her questions. People are seeing the common sense of of this legal framework that's put out there by Canisense. And they're jumping on board left and right, and it's fulfilling as all get out. Uh, I'll tell you a personal story. You know my mom, Chuck, she's got COPD and all that. She's, you know, she is what she is. Right. Uh, she was having an upset stomach the other day, running to the bathroom, and I'd got, you know, I'd ordered her some uh, cannabis capsules uh, to deal with a myriad of different things. And she popped one of those, and, dude, she was good. She was good for like 24 to 36 hours she was not in any pain her stomach was fine it settled she was in very good spirits i might say and in a giggly type of (laughs) mood but it was man it's cool dude it's cool to see uh people get access to something that's healing them without having to worry about agents of the state or where the medicine came from so i do want to you know uh, emphasize that people go to that to can of sense and, and check it out and then hit me up and let me know if you want me to sponsor you I'll be happy to do it I've actually gotten so overwhelmed I've hired to bring on uh, I've had to bring on like six other people to directly train and put out in my town to do this because it's a it is a need that it has got to be filled and can of sense happens to be ahead of the curve and filling it and so like I said I don't work for them they don't pay me to, to say anything, but when I find something that is positive, it's proactive, it's a solution, and it helps people and changes their lives, I'm going to be one of the biggest spokespersons for that or them or whatever that you can possibly imagine. It is changing people's lives. Mm. Well, that that is a, uh, you know, and, and you and I still have to have a conversation about that. Um, 
which we're going to do privately <laughs> because, uh, yeah, listen, I, as, as I laid out the last time we talked about this subject, it's not as though, uh, this would not benefit me personally and others I know. Uh, so I do have to have that discussion with you at some point soon. Absolutely, man. And, uh, you know, look, it's certainly no matter, no matter how it is, you get it. If, if you can do something that is good for you and does not feed the larger pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. beasts and bellies, then, uh, I'm all for it. That's for sure. Oh, I do. But, I'm sorry. Let me give a shout out to Leon. He's one of the co-founders of Canasense. He took, uh, the, the 13 minute explanation of Canasense that I did on a, a radio show and put it on their main website. So I'm not saying, you know, so they, they've passed everything that I've been saying through their legal department, I suppose, and everything checked out. So I was, thanks, man. I appreciate that, Leon. Well, do appreciate it, too. I mean, look, it, it, it is, uh, it, it's a great thing to see when people can uh, extract themselves from the greater corporate interest structure. That's for sure. Daniel Lewis Crumpton was with us in the second hour. Sherry Wisdom, as per usual, my co-host on Wednesday. Sherry, did you have an entertaining Wednesday on the Ocelli Effect? As always, Chuck. Thanks, guys. Do appreciate it. Stay tuned to American Freedom Radio, and I do appreciate you guys for tuning in and going to Ocelli.com. A lot of changes upcoming over there. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a can of sense tab over there sometime soon. Any Download content podcast. Download content.